Okay? As a pastor, I am not to be a quarrelsome person. I am to be gentle as a pastor, teach, and have lots of patience. <laughs> That's tough. But you know what? Same, but you know what, dads? Same quality for you, too. Same quality. Notice the words there, but avoid. This tells us that being a good father involves when to avoid certain topics. Discernment plays a major role in parenting. A godly father will avoid disputes that bring strife. I, I will, personally, I will not argue with a person if I know it's going to cause strife. I'll walk away from it. I do that in my own personal life. I do that as a pastor. If a, if a, if a member of church comes up to me and I know through this conversation all it's going to do is bring anger and strife, I will, I'll say sorry. I'm not, if this is going to cause strife, I don't want no part of it. Go get your heart checked out. I'll go check out my heart. And then if we can come back and, and be kind and compassionate and have a reasonable talk without getting angry, without bringing up strife, then I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to, you know, talk to you. But if you're going to talk to me and bring up anger and just cause a lot of strife, I'm to what? Avoid that. I, and, I, and I practice that. Well, I know sometimes in, the, in, in, in raising your children, they love to just talk just to get you what? Going. Just to, so they can have an argument. When that happens, I, I always tell my children, stop right now. I don't want to hear any more. Walk away. And if you don't walk away, I will. We'll pick up this conversation later when we're civil. Because <laughs> the Bible says in James, right? Anger does not produce the righteousness of God. Anger never solves the problem. Never. Okay? So, so we see your we as dads we need that discernment. You, you, if this going this dispute's going to cause strife, then walk away from it, tackle it another day. When you thought about it, when you've gone to bed and rested and meditated, but then bring it up again. But strife does not cause. What, what good is strife? All it does is bring tensions and ulcers. That's <laughs> all it'll do. And notice too in our text. Uh, our uh, our uh, ignorant disputes knowing that it generates uh, strife, okay? What it's talking about here is argumentative people. That's what it's talking about. I hate argumentative people. Drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. All they want to do is argue. I walk away from that too. I walk away from it. All right? As a matter of fact, that Greek word strife is forbidden in Scripture. You're not to even be around people who strive like that. Notice Proverbs 20, verse 3, dads. Look at Proverbs chapter 20, and I want you to notice verse number 3. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 3. It is honorable for a man to stop striving, since any fool can start what? A quarrel. You know what's interesting? You know people who quarrel all the time? God calls them a fool. They're just foolish people. They're fools. All they want to do is quarrel. Won't, won't help you any. Look at Proverbs 26, verse 17. Proverbs 26 and verse 17. He who passes by and meddles in a quarrel is not his own. It's like one who takes a dog by the... Ears. You ever take a dog by the ears, what's going to happen? You're going to bite the living daylights out of you. Right? That's what's going to happen. You know? He who passes by and meddles in a quarrel, not his own. In other words, if you see somebody else want quarrel, leave them alone. Don't get involved. Leave, let them quarrel. You, you stay away from that, okay? In Philippians chapter 2. Look at Philippians chapter 2 and... In verse number 3, Philippians chapter 2, in verse number 3, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than themselves. 
That's self-ambition. Okay? Strife. Listen, dads, you need to avoid stuff like this. You need to use wisdom and discernment in things. You see, a discerning mind is not an argumentative spirit, but verse 24, a gentle spirit. Dads, we need to be gentle. There are times when we can be stern, don't misunderstand me. There are times when you have to lay down the law, you know. But at the same time, you need to be gentle. You need to strive to have a gentle spirit, according to our text in verse 24. In 1 Thessalonians, turn over there a minute. In 1 Thessalonians, I want you to know chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And notice uh, verse 7. But we are gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. Gentle among you. I like, see, that's a nice spirit, gentleness. For time's sake, Titus 3.2 and James 3.17 will tell you the same thing. We need to be gentle as dads. We don't need to, get, to, be, to be in strife. We don't need to have an argumentative spirit. We need to be gentle. Gentle. Our children need to see that we have discerning minds. Okay? So discern situations, Dad. And then... It, uh, look at that situation and discern it and then deal with it according to Scripture, okay? Don't deal with it according to emotions. Deal with it according to what the Scripture says. And then lastly, being a godly role model involves a humble and compassionate heart. In humility, verse 25, correcting those who are in opposition of God, perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Being a godly role model involves a humble and compassionate heart. One of the greatest challenges associated with being a godly role model involves correcting those who oppose with a humble and compassionate heart. Amen? That's difficult. That is very, very difficult. You see, there are times when we must correct and rebuke, but we do that in humility and with compassion. The question, why? The answer, because God may grant that person repentance. That's why we have to be gentle and compassionate. And you know, we get that the older we get, don't we? I tell you, I made many mistakes. <laughs> no, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, I have to talk to Craig after. It looks like he did some harm to his wife there. So, uh... <laughs> Listen, the older we get, I think we get better at it. I can remember as a young pastor, also, and as a young dad... You know, we used to, yeah, that's it, then, bam. You know, harsh, stern, no compassion. <laughs> it's true. I, I can say that my own. As I got older, then I started, to, you know what, I've got to be more compassionate here. And early, I tell you, my poor kids, man, when they were little, it was like, you know, you do it or wham. You know, I never had no compassion. It was straight, narrow, boom. I don't want to hear it. This is dad speak. When I speak, that's it. And I'm thinking, man, alive. It's no wonder. You know, we got to have compassion. Amen. I can remember early in my, in my pastorate. I was, I was very young as a pastor. My first pastorate where I was were many, many, many buku years. Um, I was only 20, 23. And man, some of the stuff that I said, and my actions back then... I have, I have one dear old saint. I tell you what, she was a blessing in my church. Mildred Adams was her name. She, I was 23, and she was like 60. You know, she well, to me that was old. 